we need to talk about mage items. Recently I made a video talking about Season 13's mid-season patch, which changed a ton of items, particularly for marksmen and enchanter support, and I touched on mage items a little bit, but I wanted to go more in depth into them. A good few months ago, Rout Truxy talked about the lack of satisfaction when playing mages, and a big part of why the entire class feels off is caused by their itemization. Even within a seemingly narrow class of ranged magic damage casters, there are four subclasses with different goals and needs. The traditional burst mage is a mid-range caster with long cooldowns, but if you get hit by an ability, say goodbye to the colors in your game. The artillery mage doesn't pack as much power, but they can hit you from so far away that they'll be safe from retaliation and only become vulnerable once you close the gap. The battle mage has a short shorter range than the others, but they compensate for it with monster DPS or just by being very hard to kill. And then the miscellaneous subclass is the control mage, whose range is mid, the damage is mid, the haircut is mid, the cooldowns aren't that long but also not that short, they're the jack of all trades kind of subclass. Every single one of these subclasses is funneled more or less into the same build. The first two items is where they vary a bit. Battle Mages go for Rod of Ages and often Seraph's Embrace, because they benefit the most from the tankiness of Rod and usually need the mana from Seraph's, Vladimir being the exception as he doesn't use mana and gets free health from building AP, so he can go for more bursty items. Burst and Artillery Mages would just go Ludens and Shadow Flame without thinking twice about it, as their ideal outcome is to kill a squishy champion with a single rotation of abilities, so each one needs to hit as hard as possible. As for Control Mages, they will most likely build Ludens and Shadow Flame as well, unless the enemy team has lots of health stackers where they wouldn't be able to kill in a single rotation anyway, so Leandris becomes more beneficial. Some can get Seraph's Embrace as their second item to spam more abilities and compensate for their immense mana cost, and others build items that synergize with their kits, such as Azir building Nash's Tooth or Malzahar building Rylai's. But what about the items that come after that? Think about it. Every single slot will most likely be locked in from the moment you decided to play a mage. Zonias or Banshees, into Deathcap and Voidstaff. Shadowflame can also be an option if the enemy team doesn't have too much magic resist and that's kind of it. Notice how these legendary items are kind of lackluster. Zonias gives mediocre stats with a powerful active, but more often than not, using stasis won't save you unless your team is around you and willing to fight, and it delays your death cap by 3000 gold because you often have to build Zonias early. More on that later. Banshees is a cheaper defensive option, and even though the magic resist is good to survive against burst mages and AP assassins, the spell shield will often get popped by some stray projectile and then you have just a very mediocre item with little damage. The rest of your build is just focused on pure damage. You need Shadow Flame to deal respectable damage. You need Death Cap to deal respectable damage. You need Void Staff to tickle tanks and bruises a little less politely. But whenever you build these items, they don't do anything noticeable. And the ones that do sacrifice so much for it that they are often not worth building. Think of how Rylai's, Cosmic Drive, Horizon Focus or Morello could be built on so many mages, but they never do, because it would leave them without any significant damage. Then the items that do optimal damage do nothing else. Shadow Flame, Death Cap and Void Staff. They're all just plain, boring damage, but they offer so much that they become mandatory on every mage build. Let's talk about those in more detail. When it first released in Season 12, Shadow Flame was advertised as a mage alternative to countering shields, as a counterpart to Serpent's Fang that assassins build. However, when it came out, all its passive does is just give you 10 to 20 magic penetration, which goes to 20 against recently shielded targets. However, it also triggers when targets are on low HP, so shooting isn't even a requirement. This turns Shadow Flame into a snowballing stat stick item that only offers raw damage and that's it. It also gives 200 HP for some reason, but that only detracts from other things that it could do. 200 HP on a mage will not save you from getting one shot by an assassin or melted by an ADC, but you're paying gold for it regardless, when ability haste or a real passive would have been much better. Then, with Void Staff, it's a very binary item. If you have to deal with any magic resist on the enemy team, you must build Void Staff. It gives so little AP that it could be mistaken for an enchanter item, but the 40% magic penetration is what makes you able to deal with bruises or tanks building items like Maw, Force of Nature, Abyssal Mask, Wit's End and other items that gut your damage. What's unfortunate is what sets it apart from other penetration items, since it's the only percent penetration item that gives you only that. It doesn't give a slow and ability haste like Cyril does, it doesn't give bonus damage like LDR, no anti-heal like Mortal Reminder, no team-wide shred HP and copious amount of ability haste like Black Cleaver. That is the price mages have to pay for having 40% penetration instead of 30%. And then there's Death Cap. This item, in my opinion, is responsible for a lot of dissatisfaction experienced by mages. It's an item that you must build every single game. 
But why is that? Well, mages usually have lower AP ratios than bruises and assassins have AD ratios. That's because normally, a magic damage champion should have more AP than a physical damage champion has AD. But that isn't true unless you reach death cap, since base AD is a thing. A 2-item Fiora will always have more AD than a 2-item Victor has AP. Death Cap is what turns it around, by giving so much raw AP that every mage needs to build it, otherwise they fall behind. Now let's take a look at the price of building this thing. First of all, it has zero utility. No haste, no penetration, no HP, no speed, no nothing. Just AP, but a ton of it. Alright, I can live with that. It also costs 3600 gold making it the single most expensive item in the game by 200 gold. But hey, it's so much AP that maybe we can let it slide. But also, look at this build path. It's two components costing 1250 gold each, with a combined cost of 1100 gold. Unless you're getting two kills before every reset, you will feel the impact of this. This build path means that you either have to take less resets, screwing over your tempo, or just reset with nothing to purchase. And remember when I said you need Zonius first? Well, that will set you a whole 3000 gold behind for an item that is mandatory on most mages, but an item that also will not save you in 70% of cases while giving very subpar stats. With all this said, Deathcap doesn't seem so hot anymore, does it? Not to mention, some mages who need an item specific to their kit, such as Azir needing Nash's Tooth or Aurel and Sol and Melzahar needing Rylai's, have to make a choice between having a functional kit or functional damage because their itemization limits them so much with these must-have items. Not that Aurelian Soul doesn't deal damage with Rylai's, but that's another story. Now, I'm not a specialist in game design, but my sincere suggestion is to rework a few of these items to make them at least closer to their better balanced AD counterparts. Death Cap, in my opinion, should be straight up removed. What's the point of having one item slot locked in with pure damage? What could be done is to delete the item and then redistribute its AP among other mage items, so that at full build you would reach the same AP number, but with a horizon focus instead of the death cap taking up space. Would this be a net buff to mages? Yes, it would. But you could tune the items individually, such as having the more utility focused items getting less AP than the burst oriented ones. For Shadow Flame, it's a simple fix. Just turn it into an actual anti-shield item, a true equivalent to Serpent's Fang, and then you can tune its stats so it's not a default burst item, but a situational counter to heavy shielding. And for Void Staff, what if it just became like the AD penetration items? Void Staff could get as low in ability haste just like Cyril does, and Morello could get percent penetration instead of flat penetration, so it would be an anti-heal alternative without the slow, just like how Mortal Reminder is an anti-heal alternative to LDR. Rylai's would then become a dead item, unless you add a shred mechanic to it, similar to how Black Cleaver works, so it could be an AP Bruiser equivalent to the Cleaver, to be used on champs like Mordekaiser, Silas, Rumble and the short-ranged battle mages that benefit from the HP. These aren't perfect fixes, and would have to be tuned individually, but at this point, I think mages deserve some big changes on their itemization. I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of mage items at the moment, and how would you change them? If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers.